once again, Mike, uh, the NASM protocols have revolutionized my practice. Uh, it's helping my patients, and I like to just tell people if you can move better, you can do more of whatever you want to do. Yeah, that's a great point, because if you move better, you feel better, you're going to be more active. Now, we don't have enough time to talk about nutrition, but that is your background, isn't it? Yeah, it's my background. Uh, I, my degree's in nutrition, so it's something I, I like to focus on with my clients, really, because the exercise side of it, you can burn some calories, but if you're not paying attention to what you're eating, you're, you're still not going to see the results of the weight loss, which most people are looking for. Is weight management basic math? Well, that, that's kind of a complicated uh, thing there. It, it is about calories in versus calories out. I mean, that's ultimately what it's about. However, when someone's eating the right types of foods, they're less likely to overeat versus if they're eating a lot of, say, sugars and things like that all the time and on this roller coaster up and down with their nutrition. So it makes it much easier to get the right amount of calories in when you eat the right types of foods. How about frequency of eating? Yeah, you know, it used to be six times a day was recommended. There's some more information coming out now that, you know, probably don't need to eat that frequently. You're, you're kind of keeping the blood sugar elevated all the time, which might not be a good thing to constantly eat. Uh, six times per day. So it really, I think, is up to the, the client what works best for them. Some people, six times a day works great. Some people, three meals per day works great. So it's finding what works for your client. And, you know, there's an optimal way to eat probably, but what, what's realistic for them is what's going to work best. So someone's coming in, they want to feel better, they want to do more of whatever it is. Again, if it's a 500-pound squat or a, running a 5K or a triathlon, we got to get them we're even better. We got to get them on the right frequency, duration, intensity of the appropriate exercise. Top two or three tips in terms of nutrition are what? Well, I think the first thing is just have an idea of how many calories you're taking in. There's there's sites like Calorie King and those things out there where you can kind of get an estimate of your foods. If you go out to eat, you know, look on the menu and find out how many calories are in that food. I'm not a big proponent of weighing foods, but I think that it's a good thing to do just to kind of see. I was surprised when I started weighing my foods, I was getting a lot, you know, what I thought was a six ounce steak was a 10 ounce steak. Uh, so now I know what the sizes should look like. And then the easiest thing is just use smaller plates when you're serving yourself. Visually, uh, there's a lot of research out there that shows that uh, we feel full by how much we, we see ourselves eating. So if we're eating off of a, a small plate, it looks like we're eating more than on these big plates that we use nowadays. A lot of great information on nutrition. Final question, when you say a six ounce steak, is that cooked or uncooked? Well, that would be cooked, yeah. Cooked. Yeah. That big difference. Yeah, big difference. Hey, Mike, uh, thank you very much for your time from NASM. Great program. A third time, I'm going to say it revolutionized how I treat my patients. So keep up the good work, and you got an ally in New Jersey. Thank you. Appreciate it. So that was a lot of really great information from Mike about nutrition. I just have one more final question to ask him specifically about the frequency in, in which you eat. You said that not everybody has to eat six times a day. Right. It could be good for someone to eat three times a day. Sure. I always subscribe to eating seven times a day because I'm training for a, a right. bikini bodybuilding competition. But I don't know if I need to eat that many times a day. How do you calibrate who needs to eat X amount of times per day? It's really a preference thing for the client. So for someone that burns a lot of calories, so if you of a triathlete, uh, someone trying to gain weight, then eating more frequently will probably be a good idea because they need to get those calories in. Someone dieting for a show, probably still maybe a four or five meals per day would be good. Um, you could supplement with other stuff like branch chain amino acids and things like that instead of having to eat whole foods in between, but really just up to the person. So, you know, dieting for a competition is a different scenario than the average client that just wants to lose some weight there. And if that works for you and you feel satisfied doing it, then that's a great strategy. But if you feel like you're stressed because you have to plan all these meals out per day, then maybe it's easier to eat three or four times per day and just focus on those meals. Uh, we'll so stress doesn't have, so stress can impact the uh, way you lose weight. So if you're stressed about, yeah. let's say I'm stressed about eating seven times a day, yeah. that can inhibit my weight loss progress for my, or my fat loss, I should say, for a show, where so if five times a day works better and it makes me less stressed, something as simple as that could affect your weight loss or not well, so much? possibly, you know, I mean, stress does raise cortisol levels. I'm not sure how much stress the food would cause in someone's life, but from a convenience standpoint, it takes a lot of work to go to the grocery store, put everything into containers, carry a cooler around, also, you might not feel full if you're eating these smaller meals six, seven times per day versus you're eating three larger meals per day. So that's one of the things that I switched. And uh, for me, it is less stress. It's more convenient to eat three or four times per day because I'm not always worried about packing all this food. So it's something that really uh, 
freed me up, you know, and I like eating three or four times a day now versus the six or seven, which I did for 20 years. Can you eat too much protein? Well, you can, but it's difficult to do. I mean, if you if you eat a ton of protein, there's it really doesn't have that much benefit when you go way too high in the protein. Um, it does have a little bit higher thermic effect, so you do get advantage of that. So, you know, maybe 35% of the calories that you eat will be devoted towards metabolizing the protein. But when you go up real high, you're going to use it for a fuel source, and there's probably better things to use as a fuel source than protein. We want to eat enough to prevent the muscle from having to break itself down and also enough to keep us feeling satisfied. But when you go above like 40% protein in the diet, you probably don't need to, to do that. Uh, you know, special circumstances like dieting for competitions maybe, but the general population, they don't need that high of a protein intake. And then you mentioned something about branched chain amino acids. You can, you can use those as a supplement for your protein? Yeah, I like to do that, you know, if I'm dieting. So if I don't want to eat something, then I can take that. That keeps you from going into that catabolic state, but you're not really taking that many calories. It's just those three amino acids there, the branch chains. Well, thank you. My questions have been answered. I hope yours have too.